Juju Films, and today we will be talking about violence, or essentially murder-ish. I guess that's kind of the topic of this video, but not entirely. Explain that one to your kids at night. So basically, there's this game called Dishonored, and it was made by Valve. Um, you can download it right now, pretty much, on Steam for PC, uh, PS3. You can go up and pick it up at GameStop for the 360 and a plethora of other uh, systems, I'm sure. But, <coughs> sorry, um, there's this level, and it's the level where you break into the brothel, essentially. Or they call it a bathhouse, but it's just a glorified brothel. Um, you break into the brothel, and you have to kill one of the supporting characters' his brothers. I don't know who sends an awesome assassin like Corvo Atano to go and kill their own twin brothers, but I'm not going to doubt it, because I don't like them either. Well, over time, I grew pretty adept at this level. You know, I knew all the little tips and tricks. Like, in the previous level, if you save this guy from these thugs, and in this level, you can buy stuff from him. <coughs> Also in the previous level, if you poison the dude's uh, elixir stillery where he's selling illegal elixirs, then half of his men turn into weepers. It's not a good thing. By the way, if you've never played this game, I think it might not be a good idea to watch this uh, to watch this video until you've cleared about half the game. So, anyways, I knew like all of the tips and tricks in this level. I could get through the level in like 20 minutes flat, when a lot of the other levels would take me 45 minutes to an hour. So... Naturally, I developed habits. Well, these habits started out pretty, you know, low-key at first. <coughs> wow, I'm coughing a lot. Uh, but they started off pretty low-key at first, you know, it was just kind of, maybe, throwing stuff out the window every now and again. Kind of, maybe, kicking a cat in the face if it looked at me the wrong way. But over time, the habits kind of grew into murderous tendencies. Um, I started, like, snapping at friends more and stuff. And admittedly, I have very snap to -able friends. Or some of them are very snap at -able. Uh, But, you know, I started becoming more and more violent. And eventually I noticed this, so I'm like, nope, I have to back off. <laughs> and I have to just leave the game for a bit. Uh. So, I stopped playing the game for a little while, I come back to it a few months later, and this is like a week ago now. And so, I'm like, oh, okay, I haven't played Dishonored in a while, I'll go pick it up, pop it in, sign in, and let's play. So, um, I'm playing the game again, I just started off with the first level, so a couple hours go by, and I beat the first and second and third levels, and I get to the level with the Golden Cat Brothel House, <laughs> Brothel Bath House, and, um... Uh, so, I start off the level pretty generically, you know, just going up the pathway, <coughs> and I, uh, talk to that girl that's, like, by the shore, and she's like, I've seen some stuff, I don't want to talk, and I'm like, whatever, you know, bump you. So, um, I keep going, and there's this part, uh, and it's on, like, a little alleyway that's by Clavering Boulevard, if you know the geography of, uh, Dunwall, which is where the game is set. Uh, so, there's this little alleyway that's located somewhere near the gate to Clavering Boulevard, and, uh, in this alleyway is a guy, and, uh, you know, he'll make small talk, and there's rats in this alleyway, it's like a pack large enough to eat a corpse, but apparently they're not attacking him. Uh, I'll get to that later, because I have a couple theories. Um, so basically, uh, this guy, he'll go like... Yeah, uh, cities and shambles, and he's like, mm, gotta take a shot of the creature every now and again, or something like that. And, uh, every now and again, the NPC script will go like, you got any money for a poor working man? Hop huh, pal? It says it exactly like that. Uh, so, um, anyway, so this dude says that, <coughs> and he's like, uh, so he says that, Every time he says that, I stab him, and I kill him. Yes. I stab the man, and kill the man, because he asked me for money. But I don't 
kill him because he asked me for money. That's not why I kill him each time he says that. It's because he called me pal. So, if you're like me, you have pretty low-key parents. So they'll let you, uh, they give you, like, a pretty good amount of freedom, uh, you know, with what you listen to, what you wear, what you watch, all that. And so, my mother and I are both really good fans of this comedian named Dane Cook. And one of his segments and one of his videos, <coughs> not videos, on I mean, one of his tracks, on one of his CDs, his acts, um... So, one of the clips from it, he's talking about this encounter that he had at Burger King with a cashier. And he just got this vibe from a cashier that he just didn't like this person. Well, uh, so he's talking about how uh, this guy, uh, like, so Dan Cook walks up to the counter and he's like, Hey, can I get some ketchup? And he's kind of freaking out about it because ketchup is very important at Burger King. And so, the cashier's like, one second, pal. He says it exactly like that. And, uh, so, Dan Cook is like, oh, no. See, if somebody calls you pal, and you're not pals, no, F that. It was like, he said pal, I heard pal, but it was surrounded in an F face coating. I'm trying to keep this channel clean, this video clean, guys. Um, it was F pal face, and I'm like, huh, that's funny. Well, now, anytime someone calls me pal, and we're not pals, kind of make it a habit to give them the stink eye. Well, in this case, I can do a lot more and get away with it. Um, so, whenever the, the guy is like, yeah, I need more money for a poor working man, huh, pal? <coughs> if he had gone like, huh, something else, like, huh, murderous assassin, huh, cloaked figure, huh, masked human, possibly, masked magician, and I would have been like, ah, yeah, sure, here's some coins, take some whale oil while you're at it, here's, here's Mark of the Magician Devil, dude. Um, you know, so he can make magic. And, um, but he had to say pal. So, I kill him. Every time, without fail. I think that makes me a bad justifiable assassin. That makes me a bad vigilante. So anyway, I finish playing the level. Uh, I get through like another level or two. I have to get off and do a chore. Um, and so I'm doing this chore and while I'm doing this chore, I realize even though it complies with a Dane Cook stand-up act, you don't have to kill the guy every time he calls you pal. Maybe he's just trying to be friendly. So I begin to look for ways to justify it. <laughs> Instead of admitting my wrong, which I'm really bad at, admittedly. Whoa. But even though I'm bad at admitting I'm wrong, I can't just do that. Because that means I'm admitting I'm wrong. And I'm bad at that. So, um... I begin to look for ways to justify it. I eventually come to this harebrained conclusion, right? <coughs> and this is, that dude is a smart weeper in disguise. Here's how I do that. One, you are in one of the most overly infected areas in all of Dunwall, alright? There are rats keeping the freaking guards company. They have, like, pet rats on little leashes, and they're like, okay, Sammy, attack. <coughs> and so, um, so, he's in, like, the most infected part of the city with this giant rat plague, which is apparently killing off thousands of people a day. <coughs> and he's not infected. He doesn't seem to be infected by any sort of rat plague. He, as far as I've seen, is the only non-weeper, or at least 0% weeper character in that whole game that is not a guard or supporting character. But 
he's in like the most infected part of the city and when you catch up to him there's a couple beer bottles laying around and like 10 rats three of which are white white rats are vicious in that game right <coughs> <coughs> or at least they seem to be um but so yeah most infected part of the city surrounded by rats and he's fine absolutely perfect there's only two ways to explain that. A, he works for Slackjaw and he gets the elixir thing. Or B, he's a reaper in disguise. Oh, and all of this is excluding Griff, by the way. And even then, I kind of count Griff as a supporting character because he sells you things. If you play the game right, you can get Griff to sell you stuff. And it's nice to have an in-city market when you can't access Piero. And Granny Rags is a weeper. So that's how I ended up justifying that he uh, died at my hand. You know, the way I play Corvo, I really don't make him out to be as good of a guy as he's supposed to be. But I suppose as long as Emily doesn't find out about it, it's okay. Alright, agents. So, thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe for my Agent Mushroom films today. And I will cover a different topic in the next video. Uh, until then, Agent Mushroom films, signing off. Okay guys, so really quick before I end off the video, uh, this is like post-edit, I have like five seconds left, I'm gonna put this clip in and then export the video and upload. So uh, so real quick, uh, I wanna let you guys know that I'm starting a production pretty soon. Uh, it won't be very long, like a 15, 20 minute production, but um, I'm gonna put a lot of work into it, and it's gonna be almost all me. <laughs> if not entirely me. It's like... A, little video series it's going to be eventually about a city of me's that lives in my brain so if you're interested in that uh go ahead and check it out when it comes out it should be the next video uploaded by me i may have one in between now and then um so yeah okay uh see you guys later bye